welcome uh, to Aim Across the Lifespan, a series by uh, OTAP and the Oregon AIM Cohort Partnership. Uh, we are uh, pleased to welcome our next guest, uh, the Universal Tech Tools for Adulting. Um, it is a pilot project. Lauren, Lauren Thornburg and Sarah Statham are going to be uh, leading us through this conversation. Uh, all of the archives, uh, the recordings will be put into the OER Commons, Open Educational Resources, uh, there is an open Oregon Open Learning Hub, and under that hub are accessible, educa accessible educational materials group. This is where our resources for transition and all of the resources that we are amassing are. Uh, we have handouts for today, all handouts. Uh, Chandra has posted that link. If you have um, uh, if you have not registered, it's not too late to do that to receive credit. So Chandra will post that link. I'm going to stop talking because what they really want to hear uh, is the presentation about transition and resources. So I'm going to mute myself and invite the two of you to talk to us. Welcome. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the next slide that shows uh, Sarah and I's presenters. I wanted to introduce myself. I, I used to be an assistive technology specialist with Intermountain ESD for regional programs in the state. And I was part of our um, think tank working group uh, that met uh, statewide. And um, this was kind of a delight for me because Sarah and I are both on the Oregon Technical Transition Technical Assistance Network team as TNFs, which are transition network facilitators. And Sarah started looking at universal tools and wanted to develop something in her school district regions. And uh, <clears throat> since I had a background with assistive technology, I jumped in to support her, but this is really her baby. And I carry loose, which we'll talk about with AT Labs helped as well. We were kind of advisors and supporters for Sarah's project. So I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, let her introduce a little bit more about herself. I'm over in Eastern Oregon and she's over in Multnomah County area. Hi everybody. Uh, yep. My name is Sarah Statham. I'm a transition network facilitator and um, there are eight of us across the state and my counties are Multnomah, Washington, Columbia, and Clatsop counties. And um, this did start as, uh, a, I would call it a curiosity project. Um, and during the pandemic, looking for, teachers kept asking for ways uh, to just do things a little differently with some of their students. Um, and so I started looking around and this sort of evolved from there. Um, so we're pleased to talk about this with you today. Um, Lon shared a little bit about his role. I come at this as a former teacher, but I feel like I'm always a teacher. Um, I taught for over 20 years and the last half of my career was um, in transition education for students 18 to 21 in the um, Centennial School District. Uh, so that's where I come from in regards to this work. All right. Um, like I said, we are part of a broader network. Lon and I are one of, uh, or two of eight, and we wanted to make sure, because uh, I think that there are folks from across the state of Oregon with us today, that if you have questions in regard to, in regards to um, transition services and, and education in, the, in your school districts, um, this is the list of all the TNFs across the state and how to reach all of us. Um, and it's a really marvelous group of people that I think I can say that Lana and I both feel very fortunate to get to work with. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, just a slide about the Community Vision AT Lab. Um, we had the privilege of uh, collaborating with Carrie Luce as we got started with this project. Uh, if you don't know Community Vision's AT Lab, it's uh, housed here in Portland and is uh, a pretty remarkable resource. They're a really unique organization and I would highly recommend checking them out. 
Um, our objectives for today, we're going to just give you some information about universal tech tools and those that might apply to AIM. And we're going to talk about the uh, TTANs, um, our webpage that we developed. We're going to share some resources um, and we'll talk about documenting this in the IEP um, for, uh, for folks as well. Um, so universal tech tools, these are, of course, tools that are used by uh, for with for anybody with a broad range of skills and ages. Um, they're readily available. They're simple to set up. You don't need any specialized training and they're free or low cost. Um, I think the key thing is that they're easily and readily available um, and uh for anyone. So there's no, uh, sometimes we would, we've been asked questions around assessments or things in regards to that and for students to be able to access these um, tools. And and these, this is like your starting point. If you see something, this is your, uh, that a student needs some assistance with or to make them more independent. Um, this is your starting point. So um, I just want to be clear on that. I'm not a, um, I am not a, any sort of uh, assistive tech provider. Um, this really is a curiosity for me and uh, looking for ways for it to help teachers with their students to get them started and going. And I'll add on to that, that uh, when it says free and low cost, when I did do um, assessments and work with specialists and students, um, teachers really needed free and low cost tools. I mean, we, we had budgets for things, but especially when they were starting out assessing what might what might work for a student, it was nice to have some free opportunities to access some things that could be tested and tried that are universal tools anyone could use. And so that's kind of where we came from this. This slide's an example of some of the a, a toolbox and some things that we will be highlighting. Um, Bookshare is obviously for AIM, a huge, huge piece of um, accessing digital content for curriculum and books. So we plug that one in here as well, but it's not, it's more for you than it is on our website because we know that that is limited to who can access it based on their disability. Um, and most of these examples on here, I'm assuming most folks are quite familiar with. Uh, you should be able to look at these pictures and be like, oh, I know exactly what that is, um, especially in this day and age. So again, it's universal, accessible to anyone. Um, so what we, this is a, a, a visual that we use to think about how technology can help bridge the gap. So when um, a teacher comes to us and is talking about or struggling with a, like a certain situation with a student. So we want to look at what the student can do. What are they doing right now? What is the task that they want to be able to do? And what's the gap? Um, where is the breakdown happening? And what uh, easily accessible tools or technology could be available to help bridge that gap? So the student, again, the whole goal is to help them become more independent um, in the environment that they are uh, working in. And so I thought I think this visual is a nice um, a nice one to use to show how we really want to bridge that gap. Lon, do you want to talk to the set tool? Sure. <clears throat> so we put a link to set down there, student environment task and tools. It's a really nice tool, and that has a hyperlink to uh, the area that has a bundle of all of the documents and assessments and profiles and ways you can um, really really in-depth, uh, get into an in-depth assessment and um, facilitation tool is great. Uh, the thing about what we were doing at this point was for teachers as a first jumping off point. So we decided to stay away from things that would be assessments and in-depth tools that would need a specialist to work with them. But this just know what we're sharing with you would be the first point of access for teachers to be able to start looking at tools. Okay, so we're gonna show you some examples. Um, 
these are the four categories that um, we broke things down into. So you have school and college, daily living, pre-employment and employment. Um, while also knowing that so many of the tools that we explored for these different topic areas overlap there, you know, we all use a Google calendar for school, daily living, employment, all the things. So these, these are tools. Well, yes, we broke them down into different, um, these different categories. There's so much overlap in many of them. Um, so these are the different categories that we put things into. Um, and, oh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you in a little bit, but um, there's, these are the images that you see throughout the website, the Google site that we developed um, to show people, to, to keep it consistent so people knew what they were looking at. And I'm going to chime in before you yeah. change. Can you, if you can go back. Oh, yep, I'll go back. Yep. <clears throat> to the icons. Um, when we do uh, IEPs, post-secondary goals that we do that are overall goals for what they want to achieve when they exit services are bundled kind of around um, college, you know, training, education and training could be certifications. Um, then also under employment and then also when appropriate under daily living. We also put pre-employment in because we work with vocational rehabilitation a lot. And there are five pre-employment transition services they deliver. And there's a lot of overlap as far as the content and, and things within pre-employment that are skills that are developed with our students before they exit. And so we put that one in there too. So we uh, asked a lot of teachers uh, in these four different categories, what do they see as the gap? And so that's what you see on the left-hand side um, when we, so when we ask them in, in regards to school and college, what do you see as the gap where our students, um, what, you know, what they can do versus what they want to do. And um, they identified all sorts of things like spelling or being slow at typing, um, student is visually impaired, needing help with note-taking, resistance to writing, hand fatigue, um, something maybe with motor skills, uh, time management, due dates. Um, and so we took that information and our goal was to then go out and look and uh, look for those easy universal tech tools to um, then we put this information onto the website. And our goal really was to create a starting point for teachers. This is was not meant to be, uh, to give you all the information, to give you detailed examples of how something works. It was meant to be very like five minutes or less. Let's make this quick to give you just that taste of what it, what something is, what a tool is, and maybe it would work for um, for your students. So in what you'll see here, so this is uh, just a simple example that we all are very familiar with, I would think, um, that in Google Docs, you can use voice typing that microphone icon, and instead of uh, typing in uh, a paper for into a document, maybe you use your voice to put it into the document. And while most people have experience with this, some people, it's still unfamiliar, they're unfamiliar with it. And so this video is one that's on the website. Um, and I, like you could see, I'm just going to show you just a little bit of it, but you'll see it's very short and to the point. With Google Docs, using the keyboard isn't your only option to add text. You can also just talk and have Google transcribe the words for you. You can use this feature to transcribe meetings and audio recordings, or simply when you want to write faster than you can type. So you can see this is a video that is less than three minutes. It gets to the point. Um, just like they said, it might help you if you can talk faster than you can type, which I have known many students that could talk a whole lot faster than they could type. Um, and this was a really helpful tool. And again, just to give a snippet of what, um, what that uh, tool is. With Google Docs, using the keyboard. There we go. Um, the next topic that we looked at were, again, pre-employment. Um, and so we asked educators, what's the gap that they see? And they talked about uh, speech and communication, 
organization, confidence, uh, being able to reduce anxiety, processing speed, um, presentations, um, social stories. And so those were, you know, they looked at what the student can do versus what they wanted to be able to do. And um, so what could we use to fill in the gap? <clears throat> And one example here that we use is uh, Pictello. And so uh, this is an app that you can use. And our really, our goal was to have things be free or low cost. And so this day and age, things less than $20 are low cost. And um, so this is an example of where Pictello was used by a student um, to uh, share in an interview. And also I'll share this with you. My name is Alex. Thank you for inviting me to the interview today. You sent me some questions ahead of time, and I would like to answer those now. You asked why do I want this job? I want to work here at the library because I love books, reading, and meeting new people. You asked what skills I bring to this job. I volunteered last summer at the library. You can see how strong I am here. So this is showing you how Pictello could be used uh, to help a student in an interview, showcasing um, work that they may have done at an internship. And again, it's not giving you a whole lot of information and, and you'll have to do your own like work in order to um, really learn how to use the app, but it's showing you what what is possible um, and in using this one. And then on the website, which we'll show you in a minute, there are lots of other examples. <clears throat> so our next topic area was the area of employment. Again, we asked teachers, what did they see as a gap? Um, needing things like how long till my next break, uh, how long to complete something, learning the schedule, uh, <clears throat> learning when is payday. That's an important one we all like to know. Um, time management, things like when to leave for the bus, what time to be at work, um, helping with things to be, helping to have things be visual, um, self-regulating themselves. <clears throat> and so again, we looked at what they can do and what the gap is. And so like, this is an example of using a timer because you can see there's a lot of, they brought, teachers brought to our attention a lot of things around time management. Um, and so there are some videos that I'll show you that talk about the basics, right? Google Calendar app. I know that's the one I use all the time. Um, and then using timers or using timers on, and alarms on your watch as a reminder to help you with your time management skills. And then the last area that we looked at were daily living. Um, and so again, asking teachers what they saw as a gap and they identified things like um, anything that needs task analysis, reading skills, organization, cooking, following a recipe, to-do lists, motivation. Um, and what you can start to see, especially as now we're at the, the last topic area, there are a lot of overlap, right? Reading skills, they identified in daily living, but that's also something that could come up in um, in work or in your um, in your school or college needs. Um, staying on track and organization important for daily living, but also in those other areas as well. And so here's an example, and there's a there's a video. I'm not going to show it, but it's about uh, the Can Plan app, which uh, you can set up and it explains to you. It shows you, um, like, okay, you need to know how to make your own coffee. There you go. You can click on that, and it shows you. It breaks it down: the six steps to making your coffee, uh, how to do the dishes, you know, how to make a baked salmon. Two steps. That seems a little short, but. Um, you know, and it can be tailored to the student. And again, it's just showing folks what's available um, to anyone and how to tailor it to get a student started to increase their independence. So I wanna show you our Google site. Um, <clears throat> so this, I say that this website is always under construction because this page is definitely a constant work in progress. 
As we all know with technology, it's ever evolving, never ending, always changing. Um, and so sometimes if someone shares a new resource or tool with me, I might add it to this page. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I could ever say that anything technology related is ever finished. So here's what it looks like. Um, you can see we have our different categories. And so when a teacher goes and looks here, um, it, we kind of broke things down into some different areas to try to just streamline things some for uh, for teachers. And so you can see under each there is, oh, I need to fix that one. Um, it's just uh, gives you very short, very basic information. And again, we sought out uh, informative yet short videos to explain um, what it is that they're looking at. You know, we had <clears throat> one of our priorities was to not overwhelm the eye. So when a teacher went somewhere, it was very icon friendly, large text, not a lot of little print and things that they have to wade through visually. And so that I feel like we've accomplished that. <clears throat> I think we I think so. I think so. Um, so again, you can just see different things. And if something had a fee, we really tried to be upfront with that. Um, and here are some other examples. Um, this has been a fun one using Q QR codes around a workplace is a really cool idea to help students uh, or employees with what are the tasks that need to be done. Um, but as you can see, like there's always space for more. Is like, what's the next thing that we could add in here that's simple um, and would be helpful? I'll put the link to our, our Google site in the, in the chat, but I think it's also in the presentation as well. All right, Lon. Sarah, if you want, you can just scroll. I'll just give you voice directions. Okay. If, uh, go okay. back up. Yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> this is our Oregon Transition Education website. And it has at the top different areas that you can check out. But this is the resources page. That's that uh, document looking one. So if you scroll down, um, there are, again, large icon kind of domains within transition. So at the top there, uh, education and training. If you look, there's things you can find under college resources, equity education resources, training, et cetera. And then employment lists, the things there. We wanted you to get the site because let's go to employment. We'll just look at one. So if you view resources, Scrolling down, there's career exploration. So let's stop there. <clears throat> so if you were to look at those resources and you have screen readers for um, low vision and blind, you have um, text that's a, a talking word processor kind of thing, or you can use digital um, speech output. You could go to any of these websites and use your tools. So what we wanted to do is give you some toolkit resources that you can use your tools rather than us telling you and talking about the tools, we wanted to give you the resources to use the tools. So scrolling down this one, um, there's careers and STEM, um, alcohol and foods server permits, um, the benefits of going to work, and there's some SPED transition tools. If we go back uh, to the net last page. You all should so, know that this website, the transitionoregon.org website, uh, was developed based off of the Google site that I showed you where there were the universal tech tools. Um, we developed the Google site during the pandemic and then um, and now we the professionals have shown up to help uh, <laughs> make it uh, look really nice and very accessible and all the things. Yeah, I'm proud of Sarah. She's 
during the pandemic, she rolled up her sleeves and really did a lot of web page design with Google Docs and Google websites, and she's turned into a real pro at it. Um, let's go down this page, the career exploration. Oh. If, uh, Sorry, did you want to go back to that one? Sorry. Yeah, go to employment okay. and just let's scroll down a little more just to see the topics. Mm -hmm. There's work evaluations are important because a student can can be evaluated when they go out on an internship by uh, a employer and they can have goals and those can be digital documents that they can um, access and, and be able to use. And scrolling down, a little more interest inventories are important because when we're exploring um, different preferences, interests, needs, and strengths of students, these are, let's click on that view resources real quick there. Um, there's um, nice uh, explore work. There's things that would give you a skills matcher. If you go down, I think there's some that like this one answering a few quick questions. They learn if you, they could do a visual one. If you see like a person working out, planting a tree in the forest, and then there's another picture of a person um, working on a computer in an office, which would you like? And they click on it and then it goes to the next one and so on. So at the end, it tabulates what your popular um, choices were as far as what you wanted. Okay, we'll go back and keep going back we'll go to the main yeah and just scrolling down there's independent living education training self-determination communication other resources so that's all i'm going to spend time on on this page but this is our transition oregon website please take advantage of it because there's some great resources and if we go back to our slide <clears throat> I, we won't go there, but when I was researching for preparing when, when Deborah asked us to do this, I looked on, um, there was an AIM presentation theme examples and templates. It was from Cynthia Curry, the cast director, and it has, it's a great um, slide deck of her presentation, and it has some pieces around summary of performance, and if you're not familiar with that, the SOP, the summary of performance, is something that is a document that goes with the student when they exit that gives information out of the IEP and can include accommodations and modifications they could use with a service coordinator or a personal agent that supports them, a job coach, a job developer, an employer. So it's a really important area uh, to know about. We'll go to the next slide. So uh, I don't think, how are we doing time-wise? I don't know. Do we have enough time? I think we're good, Len, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so both of these, I am. I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm not super familiar with them yet because I'm not teaching from them. I am a technical assistance for teachers, but uh, Willamette ESD down in Salem, um, they have sponsored the, the contract that has the person who works to develop the Oregon employability skills curriculum. And it has badges. There's badges under different employability skills. And um, let's go up to the menu up there. And I probably need to move my. This, which one? Oh. Not? Okay. Um, Let's go to student learner for a minute. Oh, it's coming. It's not, we don't have it yet. Okay. Oh, it isn't. Yeah. So I wish I had the picture of the badges. There's domains and um, they can learn about uh, an employability skill at school and has all the curriculum and videos to watch. And if they do the tasks in the assignments, they can earn a badge for that area of that domain. And then there's a, a opportunity for them to go out into the workplace and have an employer who has been pre-set up to have students come through and do an internship to practice that skill. 
And if they demonstrate they can do it out in the field, they get another badge that's the work-based employer field badge. So um, it's it's a really nice curriculum and I would highly recommend checking it out if you're into that. And what you do is you sign up and you get on a mail list that sends you the updates and information, and then you're given a link so that you can download the entire curriculum and access it online and the videos to use with your students. Okay, we'll go back to the slide. And then this I'd other like one to, is yeah. newer. This is Career co co Connected Learning. And um, there's areas across the top for different partners. Um, if we go to educators and then scroll down, this has uh, a short video about our reason why we believe in career connected learning and having work based learning and career connected learning where a student is actually practicing what they're doing is important. Scrolling on down. I'm going to keep going. There's the resources area. We won't go there, but you can see they have lessons and they have videos. I went to a presentation on this where they said there's a high school level and there's a middle school level. And their people are, the teachers using it are saying the middle school level is the one that's more vibrant and active and more things going on and videos that and they do videos where they have really cool people out in the field talking about what they do. And so it's really a nice curriculum. Okay. <clears throat> so there's the links to those if you want to explore that. And, and the, there's a, a PDF of this slide deck in the folder. And so all the links should be live in that for you all as well. Okay, I'll turn it back to Sarah. Okay, so we wanted to finish with talking about where to document some of this information um, in an IEP. Uh, Lana and I do a lot of work with uh, agencies that may provide support in a variety of ways to students, uh, some before they leave school services, uh, some after they leave school services, but, um, we are, we are encouraging those agencies to request to look at a student's IEP because it's full of very important and useful information. Um, and we want to encourage uh, all of you and any educators you might work with to make sure to include uh, universal tech tools that a student finds success with in their IEPs. Um, you could list that information when you're listing a student's overall strengths and interests and preferences. Um, you know, maybe a strength is that they uh, know how to independently use a Google Calendar to, you know, have reminders so that they're on time to things. Or a preference could be that they use um, Google Voice to dictate uh, information or papers or, or things like that. To, but to please include that information here, um, because again, we are encouraging outside agencies to um, use the student's IEP to get to know them better, to learn about what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, it really is a, such an important document full of such important information um, that we want to make sure it, it goes there because we have learned that sometimes things that students have found success with in school, it, it isn't getting that information. It's not getting passed on to the agencies that are supporting them next. And um, valuable time can be lost and a student may have to do another assessment that maybe they've already done before. And if we could just make sure we include all that information here, it, it could help move things along um, with all the things that are gonna happen in their next phase of life. Uh, and then the educators, Lon already mentioned the um, summary of performance that's done when a student is um, gonna exit the school system, including again, those universal tech tools that uh, students find success with, success with in that document can also be really very helpful. Um, 
You can also include this information by clicking the, uh, uh, if it's if it's technology related, uh, clicking the yes in the um, assistive technology device. Um, and then again, just including that information. It's just one more spot to bring it to someone's attention that, hey, this, this is a uh, tech tool that this student uses and has found success with, um, you know, go read more. And that's all we have for you today. So thank you so much for taking the time. I think that we were gonna make some time here at the end to answer any questions that might've come up for anyone during this presentation. Yeah, this is our contact information. Uh, if you need to know more about our Transition Technical Assistance Network, even if you forget about that map and you can contact either of us and say, I live in uh, Medford or I'm over in Klamath Falls. Who do I talk to? Uh, we, we have a tight relationship with all of our other TNFs in the state. And uh, I, I might say, because we do have a minute here, that we're excited that Oregon Developmental Disability Services, ODDS, has um, funding, federal funding, ARPA funding, that they are offering in grants and people right now can go on Oregon Buys and apply and put in a, pr a proposal for using those funds. And they have a huge area in the area of transition youth and employment with, with students with developmental disabilities. And if you have any connection with those and you want to write something, you can. Um, the state did use some of those funds to uh, provide funding for our transition technical assistance network. And we have regional employment specialists that, that work with adults uh, with developmental disabilities. <clears throat> and they work with us as part of our larger TTAN. And uh, so we have developmental disabilities funding, federal funding, helping fund what we do. And we're proud of that. And we, are, we have some exciting things we're working on for the next two years with that funding. And I guess that really wraps it up. Really, really wraps it up, Deborah. Well, thank you both for being here, Lon and uh, Sarah. Uh, some wonderful information. You know, as we talk about AIM, uh, of course, it's important, um, no matter what you call it, accessible educational materials while we're in school. When we get out in life, accessible educational materials means that you need to know how to read a job application and you need to uh, know to how to access your newspaper for uh, life Um life education once you get uh, out of school. So accessibility is important across the lifespan. We started this morning with conversations conversations about early childhood, and we know that we have to prepare our kids for when they leave our nests. 